Well, they're saying money talks, but what do you really need to be in the top 1% in terms of money in your country? If you want to join Monaco's richest 1%, you'll need $12.14 million, that's all. In the US, it's only $5.1 million. Switzerland and Australia have the next highest entry points to the 1% requiring a net worth of $6.6 .6 million and $5.5 million, respectively. I love these stories, Romain, because that is any way to go. Yeah. One of the things I did was look up the population of Monaco. Okay. You want to have a guess? Uh, I, I, I know it's small. 36,000. You know what the population of the Upper East Side is? <laughs> I don't know, 100,000. <laughs> Three times that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would assume. Uh, yeah, I thought it was, I mean, the ones at the top of this list, of course, you would pre presume, right? Monaco, Switzerland, Australia, New Zealand, the U.S. makes it in there. But then I was going down towards lower yes. on the list here. So, I mean, look at this. Saudi Arabia, Romania, well. Malaysia, Brazil. I mean, these are still wealthy nations, right? But the price of entry into that 1% club is more around a million bucks, and in some cases, even lower than that. They do have their assets. But you know what really surprised yeah. me? me was that in countries where you have a wealth tax, so France, for example, you still have a multitude of people in that 1%, very high up on the list. France yeah. and Spain are in the top 12. Yeah, I thought, yeah. Are you saying, are you saying that if they didn't have the wealth tax, they, they would be higher? Possibly, or perhaps <laughs> lower. I mean, maybe they, I, I thought they had all left, but I, apparently some stayed in these countries. Well, well you know, you know, for, you know as, what, what's to say, you know, uh, France is for the French. I mean, they can't really leave the French. <laughs> well, uh, there's Belgium. Yeah, but I, I, but I get your point here. But we talk about too the idea that I thought it was also in this story we talk about the actual the total number of people who've sort of fallen into this really high elite class of global wealth it actually came down a little bit it, uh, in the most recent year it did and in yeah. fact the total number overall is not that massive at least yeah. I mean I didn't think so but of course we all it's all relative right well, yeah. 588,000 people are in the top 1% globally of all of the countries in the world yeah it doesn't seem like that many and 5.1 million dollars to the United States yeah kind of seems low no yeah but but also the geographic difference is either interesting so you talk about a global drop right but then the biggest gains that you saw actually were in those Middle Eastern nations and we've heard a lot of anecdotal evidence, particularly from the surveillance crew who went over to Davos and we were just telling us how, you know, that was basically represented by the Middle East, uh, not something that you saw in the previous years where it was dominated more by Europeans and to a certain extent the Chinese. Uh, they've really sort of risen up and they got a lot of money to spend and invest.